Hello, my name is Mr. Asprey, and this is number 35 bounds as part of my IGCSE exam questions series. If you do find it useful, please do like and subscribe. And now let's get into the maths. Okay, the technique I use for these types of questions is I write 4.3 in the middle. And if I'm only using two significant figures, the next biggest number I could possibly write would be 4.4, and the smaller one going downwards would be 4.2. The upper bound is halfway between uh, those two values there, so it's 4.35. And the lower bound is halfway between those two values there, so it's 4.25. That's it. Okay, now we've been asked to work out the upper bound of G. So we write here G upper, and that will equal... I want E to be as big as possible, but because I'm taking F away, I want that to be as small as possible. I want to take away as little as possible to make my overall value large. Okay, so let's look at E first. E is uh, 17. A nearest integer would be 18 up, and it will be 16 down. I'm looking for the upper bound, so I'm going in between these two. So that is 17.5. And then if we look for F... F is 9.4 to one decimal place, so the next number up I could use would be 9.5. The one down would be 9.3. And because we're looking for the uh, lower bound of F, I go between these two, and that will be 9.35. So I go to my calculator, I do 17.5 minus 9.35. And I get an answer of 18, sorry, 8.15. Okay, here's a similar question. This time we want an upper bound of C. So I want C upper, which means I want B to be as big as possible, but I want to take away as small as possible for A. B, uh, let's start with B, because it's the first one we'll do, and that's 15 to the nearest 5. So if I'm only going up in 5, so the next number up would be 20, the one below would be 10. I want the upper bound, so I need to go halfway between these two, and that's 17.5. A is 6 to the nearest integer, so if I'm using integers, I'd go up to 7 and down to 5. And I want the lower bound for that, so it's halfway between those two, so it's 5.5. .5. So I go to my calculator, I do 17.5, and I do minus 5.5, .5, and I get 12. Okay, next question, I'm looking for the lower bound of P. So in order for me to have P as small as possible, because E and F are times together, then I want both of these to be as small as possible. So let's look at E first. So that's 4.8 to two significant figures. The next one up, if I'm only using two figures, would be 4.9, and then 4.7 below. So the lower bound will be halfway between them, which will be 4.75. And if we look at this next number, F is 0 0.26 using two figures. So 1, 2 will be 0 0.27, and before will be 0 0.25. And again, I want the lower bound, so I'm going in between those two, and I'm multiplying this time the two numbers together, and that will be 0 0.255. So to the calculator, 4.75 times 0 0.255 is going to give me um, to three significant figures 1.21 okay next we are asked to work out the upper bound of Q so I want Q upper which means I'm going to want T to be as big as possible because it's the top of the fraction but I'm going to want the denominator to be as small as possible because when I divide by a small number my overall answer gets bigger. So I look at t first, and that's to three significant figures. So only using three figures, the next number up would be 2.74, and the one down would be 2.72. I want the upper bound, so that is in between these two here. So that would be 2.735. And then if I'm looking at w, that's 0 0.04, I'm only using one figure. So I need to use 0 0.05 and then 0 0.03. And I'm looking for W to be the lower bound. So I'm going to go in between these two. 
So I'm going to divide through by 0 0.035. So 2.735 divided by 0 0.035. And that's the two significant figures, so I get 78, just 78. Okay, next question, slightly more difficult. We are looking at the upper bound of P. So I want P upper. And in order for me to do that, I'm going to want A to be as big as possible. But because I'm taking C away, I want that to be as small as possible. And because I'm dividing, I want my denominator to be as small as possible because that will give me the larger number overall. Okay, I look at A, which is 58.4. We're using three figures, so I'd go 58.5 and I'll go 58.3. I need A to be the upper, so I'm going to go in between here, and that will be 58.45. Okay, let's look at C next. C is 20, and I'm using two figures, so I get to use both of these figures. So the next one up will be 2, 1, and the one below will be 19. And I want the lower bound for that, so that will be 19.5. And then that is all over um, D, which is 3.6, using both figures there, so 3.7 and 3.5. Again, I want the lower there, so that's going to be 3.55. So I do 5.845 minus 19.5. Probably should have put that in a fraction, but it's fine. I just press equals, and then I'll just divide by 3.55. And that gives me 10.97. It wants it to two decimal places, so that will be 10.97. Okay, next question is a bit tricky because we've got A occurring twice. Um, it asks us for the upper bound of X. So I'll we'll start by writing that X needs to be upper. So I want my A value ideally to be upper to make it as large as possible. And then I want my denominator to be as small as possible. So that means I'm going to want B to be as small as possible. But because we're taking away A on the denominator, and I want the denominator to be small, I'm going to want to take away as much as I possibly can. So I want A to be upper as well, which is handy because we can only sub in one A, uh, and we're going to choose A upper because that's what we're, what we're doing. <laughs> okay, so A um, is 3.46 to three significant figures, so the upper bound would be... Um, uh, in between these two, which would be 3.465. That needs to be times by 6. And then that's all over B lower. So B is uh, 6.3. So the lower bound will be um, in here, which will be 6.25. And then we're going to take away... Um, a upper again, which is 3.465. So we go to our calculator, I hit the fraction button this time, 6 times 3.465 over 6.25 minus 3.465. Just double check that is correct. Looks good. Press equals and then it wants it to three significant figures. Um, so 7.46 would be correct, 7.46. Okay, last question, and we have a speed uh, travels a distance of this in that amount of time. And it tells you that the distances and the times are measured to the nearest kilometer a minute, respectively. And then it asks us to consider bounds, work out the average speed in kilometers per minute of a train to a suitable degree of accuracy. Now you don't see this very often, so this is what makes this tricky. It doesn't tell you to do an upper or lower bound, it just says a suitable degree of accuracy. Okay, so what we're gonna to need to first do is um, just remind ourselves that in order to work out the speed, we're gonna to need to do distance divided by the time. And I'm gonna work out the speed upper first. So the upper bound for the speed 
which means we're going to need to do the um, distance upper over the time lower in order to get the best, uh, the highest speed. So the distance upper, we've got 487 kilometers to the nearest kilometer. So I'll do 487. The next kilometer up will be 488. Um, so the upper bound will be halfway between these two. So that will be 487.5. And the time, we need it in minutes. So it's um, 180 minutes, that's three hours. And it's the nearest minute, so we go one either side. We want the lower bound, which is in here. So that's 179.5. So we work that out, and we do 487.5 over 179.5. And we get a value of... 2.71588 so 2.71588 so I'm going to write down as much of it as I can and that should be enough okay now next what we're going to do is we're going to work out the speed lower so that will be the distance lower over the time upper and the distance lower is this halfway in here, which is 486.5. And the time upper will be that in there, which will be 180.5. We'll do that, and we'll do 486.5 over 180.5. And that will give me 2.6953. So 2.695, in fact, I'll just do uh, 2.9. Okay, so that's the, this is like the, uh, the smallest it could possibly be, and this is the largest it could possibly be. And I want to work out to a suitable degree of accuracy, which is correct. So I'm going to basically round and see when they meet up. So if I were to round to uh, three decimal places, then that would give me um, 2.716, and this would give me uh, 2.695. Uh, so those two uh, orange ones are not the same, so three decimal places is no good. If I were to try two decimal places, then I would get... Um, I would get 2.72, and down here I would get one a 2.70. Again, they're not the same, so that's no good. And if I were to try one decimal place, I would get 2.7, and I'd also get 2.7. So because these two match up, the answer is 2.7 to one decimal place. Right, I hope you found that useful. If you did, please do like and subscribe and then move on to the next topic. Bye for now.